I'm gonna play you a sound that has been known to cause anxiety, headaches, and even ghost appearances? Good luck. So, how do you feel? Whether you could hear it probably depends on the range of frequencies your speakers can produce. For instance, I could hear it from my headphones, but not from my laptop. Speakers aside, even the human ear has a limited range of frequencies that it can detect from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Anything above 20,000 hertz is called ultrasound, and anything below that threshold is called infrasound, which you may not be as familiar with, but some research has shown that it can affect us in some pretty bizarre ways. In the 80s, Vic Tandy, a college lecturer working in a research lab, began to develop a cold sweat and a noticeable feeling of depression. He even claimed to see gray shadows out of the corner of his eyes, but when he looked, they disappeared. In fact, the lab already had a reputation for being haunted. So were there actually any ghosts? Well, not quite. See, all objects based on their size and makeup naturally vibrate at specific frequencies. It's known as their resonance frequency. And if you apply that same frequency from an external source, it'll cause the object to vibrate pretty vigorously. This is how people can shatter wine glasses using just their voice. They reproduce the glass's resonance frequency and make it vibrate strong enough until it breaks. Even parts of our bodies have specific resonance frequencies and matching them can have some pretty spooky effects. Which brings us back to Tandy and his supposedly haunted lab. After some investigation, Tandy realized that the ghosts he had witnessed were actually caused by a newly installed fan. It was emitting infrasound at around 19 hertz, the resonance frequency of the eye, which is the same frequency I played for you at the beginning of this video. And when they finally turned that fan off, all of those weird feelings and shadows disappeared. There was also an elevator at Brown University, which was infamous for making riders feel nauseous. This time, infrasound was being emitted from a bent blade in the overhead fan. Now these ghost sightings or weird feelings were all being caused by a fan. Imagine if these sound frequencies were stronger. The power or loudness of a sound is measured in decibels. A whisper in a library is about 30 decibels. A normal conversation, about 60 decibels. A live rock concert, 120 decibels. A 12 gauge shotgun blast, 165 decibels. Anything above about 120 decibels will cause pain and potentially permanent hearing loss. And sounds around 150 decibels can actually rupture your eardrum. But normally, when these sounds are within the human hearing range, we cover our ears and avoid them. But the scary thing about infrasound is that we don't even hear it. And that might actually be a good thing because otherwise we hear them constantly. But that also means that you can be exposed to dangerous levels of infrasound and not even know it. But you might actually feel it. Infrasound at 130 decibels affects your inner ear causing hearing distortions. At 150 decibels, your body would begin to tremor and start feeling nauseous. And at 177 decibels, the sound would be vibrating your lungs so much that they would actually be physically controlling your breathing. Yeah, like we didn't have enough to worry about. But for now, since infrasound can travel longer distances than audible sound, it's used by scientists to track animal herd migrations, volcanic eruptions, meteor events, and even to monitor the international use of nuclear weaponry. In fact, an organization that polices the ban on nuclear tests picked up the infrasound when a meteor exploded over Russia in 2013. That event was picked up by 20 stations around the world, including in Antarctica, 15,000 kilometers away. So while infrasound does have some spooky and potentially dangerous effects, for now, it actually seems to be keeping us safer. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace. I'm in science, and I'd rather be fishing. Actually, the cool part is I can do both at the same time. I'm in science, and I'm First Nations. If your cones aren't working properly, you won't be able to see the normal range of colors, and you're called colorblind. Colorblindness is actually a bad term, considering that usually these people can see colors, just some maybe.